chapter 4 and give me verse 2. And I need another reader. Give me 2 Chronicles chapter 26 and verse number 10. Right, so we out here to preach the words of the Lord, man. We don't care if it's raining, snowing, if the weather is 20 degrees below. We sent out here to do a Pacific mission and to reach our people, the children of Israel, and tell them to come back and repent and keep God's laws or die. Right? You got hypersonic missiles popping off, ballistic missiles. Ukraine is being desolate. The cities is being torn down. What a better time is it? It is to do than to preach the words of the Mosai, man. Right. right. This is our joy, man. We get off on preaching the words of the Mosai, and we can't stop doing it. Bring this up. Look at Matthew chapter twenty-four, verse fourteen. Yeah. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Shall be what? Shall, shall be, be preached, preached in, in all the world. world. We commanded to preach in all the world. Not only in Chicago, we got to preach in Canada somewhere, man. Right. Hey, not in Canada. We got to preach in Tokyo. So it's a Jake out there in Tokyo. We got to preach the words of the Mosai. So this stuff don't get boring to me, man. You got brothers saying the truth is too hard. It's boring. And, and we love the truth, man. That's right. This right. truth not boring, man. Read. For a witness unto all nations. What? Unto all nations. And then shall the end come. What? And then shall the end come. The Lord said, then the end shall come. But until then, that means there's more work to be done. Bring this up, gang. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 2. Bring it out. Preach the word. What? Preach, preach the, the word. word. I stay at home. Preach, preach the, the word. word. We commanded to preach, man. You don't have no choice. And you either to preach the words of the Lord or die. Read on. Be instant in season. You got to be instant to preach the word, man. You could be at your so-called job place and Jake come up and ask you what are your fringes. You have to stop what you're doing. So what if your boss tells you to get back to work? You have to stop what you're doing and preach the word. Read on. Out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. You what? With all, all long suffering. suffering. You to exhort with all long suffering. Give me Jude chapter 1 and verse 3. Bring this out in 2 Chronicles. Book of 2 Chronicles. 26 and verse 10. Bring it out. Also he built towers in the desert and digged many wells, for he had much cattle, both in low country and in the plains. Right. Talking about King Uzziah, read on. Husbandmen, also in vine dressers, in the mountains and in camels, for he loved husbandry. For what? For, for he, he loved husbandry. Brothers gotta love husbandry, man. The husbandry is being a farmer planting seeds and what are we doing we planting seeds on a spiritual level so you have to love husbandry right. if you don't love husbandry your mind is not right if you say right chapter 7 and 15 Go. right if you don't love husbandry your mind is not right all of our forefathers they was into husbandry noah had a vineyard abel was the keeper of the sheep our father our forefathers was into farmer and agriculture and that's how we got to be in the last days on a spiritual level bring this up say right, right 7 and 15 bring it out hey no Laborous work. The Lord said, Hey, not laborous work. God, it's true too hard. Hey, not laborous work. And you can't hate to labor, man. You have to labor. Right. That's the commandment. Jake want to labor when he get in the side to jump. Right? Jake want to labor on a football team. But when it comes to the shoot, Jake don't want to labor. So the Lord said, Hate not laborous work. Three. Neither husbandry. Neither what? Neither husbandry. Neither what? Neither husbandry. Which the most high hath ordained. The Lord set this whole thing up, man. The Lord predestined every man to out here right now to come into the truth and preach the words to the Most High. And hey, brothers probably never would have thought they'd be out here right now. All brothers right. would have thought they would be smoking weed somewhere uh. in the club celebrating uh, St. Patrick's Day. But the Lord got them out here and took them from wherever they came from to preach the words to the Most High. Right. Bring this out in Jude. Look at Jude 1 and 3. Yeah. Yeah. Love, when I gave all diligence, to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith. What? Contend for the faith. What the Lord said? Contend for the faith. Who trying to contend for the faith, man? And we, hey, I'm trying to contend for the faith. And to death do his part, and we trying to contend for the faith, read. Which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unaware. Certain men crept unaware to stop men and to contend for the faith, man. Right. Hey, you gotta push this truth. Give me Sire right chapter 4 and 28. Right? Give me Acts chapter 5 and 39, man. And give me 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 8. You gotta push this truth to death through its part, man. That's what you signed up for. 
So you can't be scared to come out here and labor and put the brick in for the most side. Right. Right. Strike for the truth unto death. The Lord said, Strike for the truth unto death. I, I might get killed by Esau. Strike for the truth unto death. The Lord said, Strive for the truth unto death, man. Right, that's right. How you doing, sister? You believe in God? What you know about God? Hey, sister, what you know about God? Okay, that's right. Well, you have five minutes to learn some increase your knowledge about God. That's all we ask. Five minutes, sister. All right. All praise. Now, if I would ask you, what's your nationality? What would you say? You say African American. Uh, what made you say African American? That's what you were told. Well, contrary to probably belief, African American is a term that was put on our people in the 1980s. Right. That term actually doesn't identify anybody. That's two. That's literally two continents, Africa and America. Right. So I'm gonna ask you again, what's your nationality? You said African. Well, it's 53 countries in Africa. What country do you come from? We don't know. Hey, but that's why we out here, sister. That's right. We out here just for you to preach the words of the Lord to you. Right. So you can right. receive salvation to know who you are. That's right. Give me additions to Esther chapter 10 and verse 9. No. So we're going to show you who you are, sister. Right? You're not black. Black is the color of your coat. Nobody's actually black. We have brown skin. This is what the Lord said we are. Read this is the book of additions of Esther chapter 10 and verse number 9. You know. Really? Am I what? And my nation. Read it again. And my nation. And are my nation or nationality. Read one. Is this Israel? Is what? Is this Israel? Is what? Is this Israel? We are the Israelites of God. That's right. right. Ah. If you see yourself on the sign according to your father, you will be a child of God, the Israelites. Right. One of the greatest people yeah, upon the face of the earth. The Give me First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 13. No. So we can't. We gotta stop calling ourselves a, 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 a strong African American woman. Right. A strong black woman. You a strong princess, Israelite princess. That's who you are. All right. Bring this up, man. Right. Chapter sixteen, verse thirteen. Bring it out. Oh, ye seed of Israel. Oh, ye what? Oh, ye seed of Israel. His servant, ye children of Jacob. Ye what? Ye children, children of Jacob. Jacob. His chosen one. His what? His, His chosen one. His what? His chosen one. The Lord said that Israelites are his chosen ones. Now, we're going to go into how do we know that we're Israelites. Because you can't believe anything somebody tells you. Right. That's we know right. we're the Israelites because the Israel God said those are the chosen people. Right. This people was above everybody on the earth. That's right. Now, when you look at every uh, nation of people in 2022, what nation of people dominates everything they do? Like, literally. Anything they do, whether that's dancing, playing basketball, hula hooping, Jump roping. Who does it the best? What nation of people? You said what? We do. That's right. That's Who right. cooks the best? We do. Uh. And a so-called white man can't cook like our grandma. La uh. Right? Grandma got the corn, beef, and cabbage in there. She pat you on the back. She said, "Come on, baby, and sit down." And a so-called white man, he like his meat raw. Uh. 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 The, the so-called uh. Japanese man, he can't cook. He just take a squid out the ocean and cook it up. That's his meal. Who danced the best? We do. Who boxes the best? We do. So who are the Israelites? We are, that's right. Give me uh give me the book of Second Magazine chapter 8 and verse 11. Second Magazine chapter 8 and verse 11. And give me the James chapter 2 and verse 6. And you got two minutes to learn who you are, King? According to the Bible? Two minutes, brother. Come on, brother. So, yeah. Come on, brother. Come on, you got it, brother. brother. You got it, man. You got it, brother. Two minutes, the Lord man. wants you to come back. Two minutes. Two minutes. Look at 2 Maccabees 8 and 11. Oh, oh. Wherefore, immediately he sent to the cities upon the seacoast, proclaiming a sale of the captive Jews. I mean, a what? Proclaiming a sale of the captive Jews. So the Jews went to slavery. It was a sale of the captive Jews. Right? Checking out your teeth. Is this teeth strong? Okay, let me see if his arms are strong enough. Let me see how high he could jump. This is what the so-called white man did to the Jews. But who did that happen to? It didn't say that it happened to the African-American man. The black man, it said to the Jews, the Israelites. That's right. right.
and promising that they should have four scores and ten bodies for one talent. That's it on that. Bring this up. James two and six. Yeah. But ye have despised the poor. What? But, but ye have despised the poor. The Lord says the so-called white man has despised the poor. Who are the poor? Who would you say in the society is a, a poor? Okay, that's right. Majority of us are poor. You know what? Do not rich men oppress you? The Lord said, Do not rich men oppress you? Hey, sister, who is the rich man that's oppressing the poor? He said what? The so-called white man, he's the rich man. That's right. He owns all of these buildings that you see. Hey, you have, you got the Trump Tower right down the street around the corner. That's the so-called white man that owns that. Their forefathers. He said, the Lord said the rich man oppresses the poor. That's, right. That's how we know we the Israelites of the Bible. That's right. Hey, hey, say that again, sister. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Hey, That's right, man. Huh? Give me Tobit chapter 3 and verse 3. This is how we know we the Israelites of God. Right? Tobit chapter 3 and verse 3. Okay, Tobit chapter 3 and verse 3. Read yeah. up. Remember me and look on me. Punish me not for my sins and ignorances right. and the sins of my fathers who have sinned before thee, for they obey not thy commandments. For they what? For they obey not thy commandments. And these is the conditions that we in right now because of our forefathers they sent. You might be walking down the hood, you might think, dang, why, why we always strong out on drugs and crack? Why we always homeless? Why we can't get a job? Why are we the last hired, but we the first one to get fired? Uh, Why are the odds against us in this society? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 65. You got to no! ask these questions. Tobit said it's because our forefathers have sinned against God. That's right. Read one. For they obey not thy commandments, for, for thou has delivered us for a spoil. What? Thou has delivered us for a spoil. And unto captivity. To what? And unto captivity. Like that deliverance and captivity. There you have it. Plain. And people don't want to talk about this. People want to talk about uh how much how many three step curry just hit though. People want to talk about how hard LeBron James can dunk the ball. He didn't score 40 points. But nobody wanna talk about the atrocities of the black Hispanics and Native Americans, man. Yeah. But we don't talk about it out here, man. Yeah. Yeah. That we don't talk about this. Oh. Read on. And until death. And for a proverb of reproach. Now we a proverb of reproach. That's right. People, hey man, you watched the you watched the Boondocks before? Like an episode. Well, you got this man on there named Uncle Ruffles, right? And I seen him um, on his episode I was watching. Guess what he said about the so-called black man? He was so-called babysitting Huey and um Riley, and he shut the door. And he said, I'm here to do an investigation and to collect data because the black male is one of the hardest animals to contain. That's what he said, I'm here to collect data. Like we an animal. That's a proverb. They call us monkeys. Right? Black people like watermelon. That's madness, man. Black people like fried chicken. And the biggest proverb of all time, if you want to hide something from a black man, you put it where? If you want to hide something from a so-called black man, you put it where? In a book. Why? Because we don't read. Read one. And for a proverb of reproach to all the nations among whom we are dispersed. We disperse among all nations. Bring this up. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 65. Yeah. And among these nations shalt thou find no thieves. God said amongst these nations, you're not going to find thieves. You don't have to, you have to work at 9 to 5. It's no, it's no choice. After this, brothers got to get right back up and get ready for work tomorrow. Yeah. Right, brothers know that. Read on. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and falling of eyes, and sorrow of mind, and thy life shall hang it down before thee. And I what? And thy life shall hang it down before thee. Lord say you feel you're gonna feel like your life hanging in doubt. That's why our suicide rate amongst the so-called uh, minorities is starting to increase. Why? Because we feel like we don't want to be. What is there? We can't prosper. But God say it is a way you could prosper in the Bible, and we gonna find out. Give me the classic Joshua chapter one and verse nine. Right. And give me Leviticus chapter eleven and verse seven. Bring it up. Joshua one and nine. Have not I commanded thee? 
Look at that verse 8. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Right. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. What? For yes, then yes, thou yes, shalt yes, make yes, thy yes, way prosperous. God said, if you keep the commandments, then you will make your ways prosperous. Prosperous. Read on. And then thou shalt have good success. And you will have good success. Then you will start to prosper. But in order to do that, you got to find out what are the commandments. You know any commandments? Right, thou can I steal what else? Alright, we're gonna help you up. Bring this up. This is Leviticus 11 and 7. The one. And the what? And the swine. You know what swine is? Pig. That's right, we don't. So he divides the hub and be clever for it, yet he to him not the cuz, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall you not eat. Of their what? Of, of their, their flesh, flesh shall you not eat. eat. So God commanded us not to eat pork. But lo and behold, guess what you see so-called black people doing? Yeah, every part of it. They don't care what part of the pig it is. Hey, I'm going to eat me some pork. Right. right? I got pork on my pork. But God said, hold on, don't do that. Our people don't want to listen to these laws and the commandments. That's why this stuff happens to them. Right. That's, That's why right. they're getting high blood pressure and gout and stress and anxiety. But the Lord just said, all you have to do is don't eat pork. God gave us a dietary law, you know what? And their carcass shall you not touch. They are unclean to you. Right, so we can't eat pork anymore. So if you did, you will have to repent for your sins and never eat pork again, all right? You know what? For none, these shall you eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever has been in scales and the waters and the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. Them shall what? Them shall ye eat. What comes out of the waters that have fins and scales? Fish. Now what type of fish? Uh, you got salmon. That has fins and scales. Majority of the fishes have fins, but they don't, some fishes don't have scales. Like catfish don't have scales. Shrimp, crab, and lobster, they don't have none of those things. But again, you, our people like to eat that though. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 8. Right? So those are the two commandments, basic commandments that you will have to keep to follow. And you say you love God, huh? How you love God? You said what? I said how you love God? Yeah. Alright, we're going to show you how to love God. Give me 2 John 1 and 6. Yeah. 2 John 1 and 6. Second John what? chapter four and verse eight. You can bring this up first. One and six. Second it's the John, book of Second John, chapter one and verse six. And this is love. And what? And, and this, this is love. love. And God put that in there. He said, and "This is love." Why? Because our people have a misconception of what love is. A man might be physically abusing his woman, yet the woman say, "He, hey, I still love him. He loves me." You had, uh, what's her name, Holly Berry? She came out and said, "If a man don't hit me, he don't love me." Well, that's not love according to God. This is what love is. Read one. And this is love that we walk after His commandments. That we what? That we walk after His commandments. That we what? That we walk after His commandments. So, what is love, sister? That's right. That's what how we walk in His commandments. That's how you love God. Because love is an action word. If I, if you have a, a husband. Your husband will love you by doing the things that he has to do. He will take action. He will provide for the household. He will teach you certain things. He will uh, guide you and protect you. Right? So love is an action word. Right. All right? Bring this up. Deuteronomy 4 and 8. Yeah. And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law? What? As, as all, all this law. law. God said what nation on the earth got righteous statutes like this? Because when you analyze these commandments, they actually get nations of people in order. Why do you think the so-called Jewish man, he has no gang violence among his community? Because he's keeping the law of the most high. Right. Why do you think they prosper? They own everything. They even, um, some of those Amalekites, they even marry within their own nation. 
Why? Because they took our heritage and they applied it. Why do you think the Ishmaelites, you know, you don't hear about uh, Ishmaelite or Arab on Arab crime? Because they're keeping the laws of the Mosad. That's right. Read one. Which I said before you this day, only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thy eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. Lord said, take diligently heed that you don't forget these things. All right? Give me Psalm chapter 116 and give me verse 2. Yo. You got tattoos? All right, give me Leviticus 19 and 28. See, Chuck. But the Psalms 116 and verse 2. Yo. Because he has inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. We got to call upon the name of the Lord as long as we live. That's right. And the only way God is going to hear your prayer is if you keep the commandments. Because right. God doesn't hear sin. Alright? Right. So bring this up. Leviticus 19 and 28. No. You shall not make any credit for your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. What? Nor print yeah, any, any marks, marks upon, upon you. So we can't print any marks upon you. But that's where repentance comes. Hey, that's why repentance, that's a heavy word, man. How beautiful is repentance? Because now you're able to show repentance. Give me that in uh, Syrac chapter 20 and verse 3. Right? Ecclesiastes chapter 20 and verse 3. Go. Now you have a chance to repent, sister. We all used to eat pork up here. Some brothers still got tattoos. Right? Some brothers uh, used to eat shrimp, crab, a lot. We used to do a lot of things, but we repented for our sins. Bring this up. Okay, Ecclesiastes 20 and 3. We know. How good it is. Like, how good is it? When thou art reproved. What guy said? How, how good, good is it is when thou art reproved? I said, how, man, how magnificent is it when thou art reproved? It's going to tell you why. Read on. To show repentance. What? To, to show, show repentance. repentance. Proof is just really to show repentance. Right. Some brothers, they don't like reproof. They don't even know that you have a chance when you get reproved, you have a chance to repent. Because the Lord could kill you, man. Right. But ah. now he's giving you an opportunity to repent from your sin. That's right. right. Do you know how to repent? What? Give me Psalm chapter 38 and verse 18. Give me Second Ezra chapter 16 and give me verse 67. Give me Psalm chapter 32 and give me verse 5. It's the book of Psalms chapter 38 and verse 18. Yeah. For I will declare my iniquity. For what? For I will declare my iniquity. The first step to repentance, you have to acknowledge where you went off of. Right. And for in order to do that, you will have to know the commandments. Right. And it's more than just ten commandments. We got over uh, 613 law statutes to command you know. that we have to keep to the best of our ability. Right. So you have to acknowledge your transgression. The first thing you gotta do when you go home, sister, you gotta get on the you gotta uh, get on the floor and pray to the Most High and uh, and confess your sin. Say, Lord, I used to eat pork. I used to get tattoos. You smoke? No. Okay, I'll pray. I used to uh, whatever you used to do. Read one. For I will declare my iniquity, I will be sorry for my sin. I will what? I, I will be, be sorry for my sin. And you have to be sorry. You can't just come up there. We say this all the sorry for your sin. Right. Read, bring this up. Second Psalm 32. Psalm chapter 32 and verse 5. Yeah. Yeah. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. And my iniquity have I not hid. My what? And my iniquity have I not hid. King David said, hey, I ain't hide my iniquity. I confessed it. Read on. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Now what? And thou, thou forgavest the iniquity, iniquity of my sin. The Lord will forgive you if you confess and forsake your sin. Right. All right, bring this up in 2nd Ezra 16. Right, 2nd Ezra chapter 16 and 67. 2nd Ezra chapter 16. And verse 60 seconds. Yeah. Behold, behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. He's all from your sin. What? He's yeah. all from your sin. You got a three-step uh, repentance. There's three steps to uh, fully repent. You got to acknowledge your sin, be sorry for your sin and confess it, and forsake your sin. Meaning don't do it again. Read on. And forget your iniquity. What? And, and forget, forget your, your iniquity. iniquity. To meddle no more with them. You gotta forget that. Why? Because you will be a good woman according to God. All right. So we gotta get you built up, but we here to build you up, sister. All right. So do you know how to properly pray according to God? 
Or what, what are your steps to prayer? Or what would you say? Okay, okay. Give me First Corinthians 11 and 3. All right, give me Daniel chapter 6 and 10. And give me Matthew chapter 6. Let's start at verse number 5. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5. Yo! And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, what? But when thou, thou, thou prayest, so when you pray, sister, read on. Enter into thy closet. What? Enter, Enter into thy, thy closet. closet. Meaning, go into an isolated place where it's just you and the most All right. All right. Don't be coming out here on Michigan Avenue, right down there, and trying to pray in front of everybody. The Lord, He's not done with that. So when you pray, you could go into your secret place. Read on. And when thou hast shut thy door. Pray to the Father, which is in secret, right. and thy Father, which sees in secret, shall reward thee openly. The Lord is going to get back, and eventually he's going to hear that prayer if you're to sin, and he's going to reward you. Right. All right? Bring this up. First Corinthians 11 and 3. Yeah. Yeah. But I would have you know that the head of every man is a Mashiach, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of the Mashiach is your house. So it's an order. You got the Mosai, whose name is Yahweh. You got his son, which people call Jesus Christ. His real name is Yahweh Shai. You have man and then woman. And we got an extra umbrella. Yeah, uh, somebody get this sister umbrella. All right? So it's in that order. Read one. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor with his head. You listen to sister? First huh. Corinthians 11 and 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor with his head. Well, a man cannot pray with his head covered. A man, when he prays, he actually has to have his head uncovered. See. Why? Because he will be dishonoring his head. Right. The head of man is Christ. Right. Read one. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. Does what? Dishonoreth dishonor her, her head. head. Well, as a woman, you have to pray with your head covered. So you get a head wrap, a bonded, whatever you use, but you have to pray with your head covered. Because do you have a husband? Well, if you did, it was to get a husband or a man, he will be a head of the household and he will be dishonored. All right? So for prayer, you got to pray to the most high in secret. You got to have your head covered. And most importantly, you got to know what the most high's name is. Because God is just a title. A lot of things is called God. There be God's enemies and Lord's enemies. That's right. But we're going to find out the name of the most God. Give me Isaiah chapter 12 and 2. All right, one more, one more, one more scripture. It's Isaiah 12 and 2. Oh, Yahweh is my salvation. What, what the Lord said? Yeah, Yahweh, Yahweh is my salvation. Yahweh is the name of the Most High. That's right. Right, the Father, people, people that say the Father or the Father God, His name is the Most High, Yahweh. Read on. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Yahweh is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. All right, give me Matthew 1 and 21. All right, so you have Yahweh. Let me hear you say it. Yahweh. That's the name of the Most High, and his son is Yahweh Shah. Right. Matthew 1 and 21. Yeah. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shah. I shall what? Thou shalt call, call his name Yahweh Shah. So his son's name is Yahweh Shah. You know what? For he shall save his people from their sin. He's the savior of the nation of Israel. So before you leave, sister, what's three things that you learned up here today? You got to say it in the mic so we can all hear you. So how do you do, how do you repent? We gonna give a quiz. We we do this to everybody. All right, we do this to everybody. So you're not the only one. So how do you repent? Okay. All right, ask forgiveness for you, and what else? You ask forgiveness and you don't do them again. All right. All right. So that's one thing. What's two things you learned today? Two more things.
ya hao ya hao yes, right. yes. that's who we are we the Israelites all right take care sister all right and the sister kind of said that with some authority you got certain brothers there whisper that Israel, yeah, I'm an Israelite. Hey, she said I'm an Israelite, man. Corinthians eleven twenty two. We the Israelites of the Most High. Second Corinthians chapter eleven and verse number twenty two. We know. And it reads, right, right, eleven and twenty two. Are they Hebrews? So oh, us. Are they Israelites? Are they what? Are, are they, they Israelites? Israelites? Are they what? Are, are they Israelites? Israelites? So, we the Israelites to the Most High, and That's we return into the Most High in the last day. That's give me Romans chapter thirteen and give me verse eleven, bro. All right? Give me Romans chapter thirteen and give me verse eleven. And give me Ezekiel chapter thirty-seven and give me verse ten. It's the book of Romans chapter thirteen and verse eleven. Yeah. And that knowing the time. That now it is high time. It is what? It, it is, is high, high time. time. It is what? It, it is, is high, high time. time. Now it's high time, man. Why? Because the Israelites have been asleep for too long. But now it's high time to wake up in the last day. Read one. To awake out of sleep. To do what? To, to awake, awake out of sleep. Not to stay sleep. To, to awake, awake out of sleep. sleep. Read. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. What the Lord said. For, For now, now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. And you hear that so far, white woman? Our salvation is nearer than we believe. That's right. And you're done. You're finished. Ah. Right? Your days is numbered, literally. That's right. Read this. Read this up. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 10. Yo, Ezekiel chapter 37 verse number 10. Yo. So I prophesied, and he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived. Hey, what? Hey, and they live. Give me Hosea chapter 6 and verse 1. And give me Revelation chapter 11 and verse 11. Read. And stood upon their feet. Yeah, what? And, and stood, stood upon, upon their feet. feet. And the Israelites are standing upon their feet, man. That's right. And these people, they, go, they get confounded. They walk down Michigan Avenue and they see five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten black males out there with a Bible. They don't, they go crazy, man. They don't know what to do. But the Lord commanded that we should rise. Right. Read on. An exceeding great army. Hey, what? An exceeding, exceeding great, great army. army. A small army. An exceeding great army. We that exceeding great army that was prophesied in Ezekiel the 37th chapter. Right. Bring this up. Hosea so chapter 6 and 1. Yeah. Come and let us return unto the Lord. The Lord said, Come and let us return unto the Lord. Who wants to return back to the Most High, man? Yeah. I mean, it's only right that we to return what? back to the Most High and His laws, man. Jesus. We have to return back, man. We was long gone and lost, but now we're found. Right. Right. For He has torn, and He will heal. Yeah, what? For he, he has torn, and, and He will heal. heal. We've been torn down, literally. We've been stripped of our nationality. We've got sores on us. We don't know who we are. We bugged out, but the Lord will also heal us. Read. Right, right. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. Right. After two days, will he revive us? Right. And the third day, he will raise us up. He will what? He, he will, will raise, raise us up. up. You living in the third day on a spiritual level, the Lord is raising us up. Right. And how do y'all feel about black men standing out here with Bibles? Hey, mister with the Giordano's pizza, with the pizza box. He says yes. good. He don't know what's going on. Hey, you should be afraid, man. That's right. You should be scared when you see us out here. That's right. You bring this out, Revelation 11 and 11. Revelation 11 and verse 11. Yeah. And after three days and in half, the spirit of life from the hell entered into them. What? And they stood upon their feet. They what? And they, they stood, stood upon their feet. feet. Why is we study reading about the Israelites standing up on their feet, man? Why? Because we was at a lower state. We was at the bottom. We couldn't stand up, man. We was so broken down. Imagine a woman getting her child shaken from her and sold to a plantation. She could never see her child again. You know how that would make her feel? She wouldn't be able to hold her head up. But now the Lord is making us stand up. Read one. And great fear fell upon them. And what? And great fear fell upon them. The Lord said, and great fear fell upon them. And what's your nationality? The lady that's walking. And the Lord said, great fear shall, what, read that again. And great fear 
fell upon them. Great fear fell upon these people, and they confounded. They don't know what to say. They won't even look this direction. Look at that. They won't even look this direction. Right? Great fear is falling upon the heathen, man. Yes, the Lord is putting that fear of the Israelites back upon them. We want which saw them, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. Come up what? Come, come up hither. Lord, why don't we hear that come up hither? Give me Psalms and Solomon chapter 2 and verse 10. That's what we're striving for, man. Right. We're not out here for no reason. We're not out here just because this is a hot, this is something to do. We out here to hear that come up thither. And that's going to be the elect getting beamed up into the chariots. Read what? And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And they what? And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. Give me the classic wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 and verse 1. And nobody has ever seen on this earth in 2022 a man get ascended up into a chariot, a UFO, a cloud. Read what? And their enemies be helpful. Their what? And their enemies be helped. Our enemies is actually going to see that. Read the one. And the same hour was there a great earthquake in the tenth part of the city fell. Right after the Israelites get beamed up, that's when destruction is coming. Right. Bring this up. It's on the Solomon chapter 2 and verse 10. Read it oh, up. My beloved faith and said unto me, rise up. What? Do what? Rise, rise up. up. Do what? Rise, rise up. up. And the Lord is going to say, rise up. Read it one. My love, my fair one, they come away. Do what? They come, come away. away. Do what? They come, come away. away. Hey, give me Psalm chapter 55 and verse 6, man. Imagine that, man. That's the words I want to hear. I don't want to hear Steph Curry dropping 63, man. Or Kyrie ah. Irving dropping down how many points he dropped, man. I want to hear come up, my beloved. Come away. Read one. Well, lo, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. Meaning all the destruction, the famine, the persecution that you went through, that's past. Bring this up. Psalms chapter 55 and verse 6. No. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. What did King David say? Oh, oh that I had wings like, like a, a dove. dove. Hey, David said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. Read one. For then would I fly away and be at rest. What? For then would I fly away and be at rest. Even all the way back then, over 2,000 years ago, hey, David wanted to hear that come up hither, man. He wanted to get up out of Babylon the Great, man. God. King David, he didn't want to stay in America. Why? Because America has been polluted by these people that's walking. That's right. Would y'all agree that the so-called white man has defiled the earth? See that? There you have it. Even the old people said. Yeah. That's playing upon the table, man. That's right. So that's why David said, come get me out of this place, man. Right. Hey, Enoch had to be translated speedily. Right. Lest that wickedness shall alter his understanding. Bring this up. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1. Yeah. Yo, then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness. Then shall the what? Then, then shall the righteous man stand, stand in great boldness. The wicked man. Then, then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness. The Lord said the righteous men, man. Meaning right. the men that got a mind ready to work in the last days. Read one. But for the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labor, when they see it, they shall be troubled. And they what? When, when they, they see, see it, they, they shall be troubled. And this man is troubled, man. He don't know what's going on. And it's right God. Are you out here selling uh, for the same church today weekend? I'm just listening. You said what? I'm listening. You just listening? Yeah. Read one. With terrible fear. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of their salvation. Shall be what? And shall, shall be amazed, amazed at the strangeness of their salvation. salvation. Hey, that's a look at them. They don't know what's going on. They just look. I'm coming. Oh, I'm amazed. <laughs> See the black men with Bibles out here. God! Wow. Well, Christ is a so called black man. That's right! And he's coming back with vengeance upon all so called white people. That's right! Hold your thumbs up to that, man. Right. And they don't want to hear that. Right? They won't see your Porzea to stand up. But what the Lord say, read it again. When they see it, they shall be troubled. They shall what? They, they shall, shall be troubled. troubled. They shall what? They, they shall, shall be troubled. Read. With terrible fear. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of their salvation. salvation. Because it's a strange thing. Nobody, like I said, nobody has ever seen somebody get beamed up in a so-called identified flying object. Nobody has ever seen that. If somebody was to see that right now, they might bug out and pass out. But that's why the Lord said this is a strange deliverance, a strange salvation. 
But give me Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 14. Right? Just like the Lord delivered us out in ancient Egypt with a stretch out in a mighty arm, the same way the Lord is going to deliver the Israelites soon to come. That's right. Because Jeremiah 16 and 14. Yeah. Therefore, behold, the days come. What? Behold, the, the days, days come. come. Meaning the time is coming, read what? Saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth. I brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. God said, hey, you're not going to say, we're not going to be talking about how the Lord delivered the, uh, the Israelites out of Egypt no more. Right. That's going to be in the past. Read one. But the Lord liveth. What the what? But, but the, the Lord, Lord liveth. Read. That brought up the children of Israel. The what? The, the children, children of Israel. Read. From the, the land of the north. From the what? From, from the, the land, land of the north. north. That's what we're going to be talking about. Good. Lord willing, man. How the Lord deliver us from the land of the north. That's right. right. Want... And from all the lands where the he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Imagine that. And you back into the land where the Lord gave you from inheritance. Right. Why? Because, give me Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. Why? Because the Lord said this land is the foul under the inhabitants thereof. Give me that in Isaiah chapter 24 and verse number 6, man. We don't want to be here. We just going to say it. Right. While these people rejoicing and they laughing and they turning up and wickedness is abounding on the earth, we don't want to be here. Man. That's right. We want to be in a place where we can safely keep our laws and serve the most high. Right. Bring this up. Micah 2 and 10. No. Arise ye. What? Arise ye. Read. And depart. For this is not your rest. Because it is polluted. Because what? Because, because it is polluted. polluted. I mean, just look at the air. Right. The air is polluted, man. Right. Look at the trees. The trees got damn balloons in them. The grass not really appearing. You got smoke all in the air. The food is defiled. The water, you drink a bottle of water, you feel thirsty, man. Right. You eat some fruit, you feel, you don't even, you don't even get the full nutrients. Why? Because this earth is polluted. Read the word. This shall destroy you. What? They it shall destroy, destroy you. you. Even with a sword destruction. Even with a what? Even with a sword destruction. That's plain upon table. Clean this up. Isaiah 24 and 6. Hello. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned. The what? The inhabitants of the earth are burned. And few men left. Time is coming where it's gonna be few men left. That's Why? right. Because the Lord gotta cleanse this whole land. Right. Give me Leviticus chapter six and give me verse thirteen. Teacher. And give me Revelation chapter three and give me verse two. Give me Revelation three and two first. Revelation chapter three and verse two and bring it out. Book of Revelation chapter three and verse two. Be watchful. Do what? Be, be watchful. watchful. And strengthen the things which remain. And are ready to die. Right. For I have not found thy works perfect before your hour. What the Lord say? For I have not found thy works perfect before your hour. Read it again. For I have not found thy works perfect before your hour. Your works are never found perfect before the most high, man. Yeah. So you gotta always be on fire and do the work of the most high. Right. Bring yourself, okay? God, Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 13. Yeah. The fire shall ever be burning. Or it say, the fire shall ever be burned upon the altar. It shall never go out. It shall what? It, it shall, shall never go out. What the Lord say? It, it shall never go out. Repeat it again. It, it shall, shall never, never go out. out. With that, from your shoulder. From your shoulder. From your shoulder. From your shoulder. Death to America. 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 Death to America.